So these are my two mini Aussies, Frankie and Indy. And if there's anything that the mini Aussie is known for, it's always being excited. Now when you're going to visit a friend or you're going on a trip or traveling somewhere, you wanna make sure that your dog is in best state of mind to travel and to behave while there. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Well, 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 welcome back to another episode of Dogmas. Been uploading every single day since December 1st, going to the 25th. Haven't missed it yet. For those that are new here, this is Frankie to the moon. He is the star. Yes, I know, he looks like him. And this right here is Indy to the couch. She is the co-star. And fitting enough, Indy's mom is right here on the couch. Look at that, I wonder where she gets it from. Oh my God! <laughs> Holy smokes, this is a magical moment. So one of the things that we do a lot is go places and we bring the dogs with us. <laughs> like, oh, oh, I didn't like that. Don't do that. Whether it's going to a cottage or going to a friend's house or even just our parents' houses, we need to prep the dogs in order to go to those places because for those that know, well, not so much Indy, but more Frankie, or just the Australian Shepherd breed in general, they're freaking crazy. You, you're supposed to be nuts, but you're not. What's with the licks lately, dude? Yeah, she's super licky. It's a little, it's a little weird. This guy's the crazy one. So we have to prep him more than anyone in order to uh, go places. So I'll be going over the things that we do before we actually go somewhere because you can't expect this breed to go somewhere and just settle down and be okay there. There's a lot of things that you can do when you get to a home, especially if it's somewhere that's new. You can keep your dog leashed and walk them around to show them the boundaries of the home. This isn't something that I'm gonna show you because they've both been to the home that we're gonna go to. It's just Angelica's mom's home. But showing your dog's boundaries when you get there is super important and I highly recommend it. It just takes away the worry of them thinking, oh my God, where am I? I need to go check everything out. And it's way better if you show them where to go and what's around versus them checking it out for themselves because they could injure themselves. They could fall down the stairs. They could eat something that they can't actually consume. And we don't want that. So the first thing that we gotta do is the food. Now I've been looking for the perfect travel bowl to use, but I just find using a classic Ziploc container becomes their food bowl and it's good for transporting it. You don't need to buy all this fancy stuff. So since Indy usually resides at the home, she already has food there. So we're just preparing Frankie's food. So he's gonna go with like three quarters of a scoop of kibble. Then I'm gonna be adding on the Pro Gut from Thrive. It's just basically just good probiotics to make their gut happy. And especially because Frankie has a little bit of a sensitive stomach, I'm trying to figure out how to make it a little bit stronger. Now it's time for the main event. This is chicken. Oh, it's falling. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna touch it. This is chicken raw patty, and it gets half of a patty. And then moving on to the second last thing, I add in the food supplement, which is salmon oil, and I just do one pump. And then to top it off, because he's been such a good boy, and because the Costco dog admin calendars have worms in them, uh, and we are not using those anymore, I'm gonna add a little treat on top, just because he's been a good boy. And what would be next is if Frankie was sleeping over, I'd be packing his bed. We have a bed for him and I always bring a blanket just so he has a sense of what is home. This is his home for the night because if you just bring your dog somewhere and expect them to relax, they're always gonna be in a new environment because their scent's not there yet. But if you bring their scent with them, they might feel a little bit more calm and relaxed. Hey Butters? Yeah. But you have been there before, so we're not gonna bring your bed. And what do you think we're gonna do next, guys? I think Frankie knows, but I don't know if Indy knows.
Oh, I'm sure you could have guessed it. We are at the park because these two need to get their energy out. However, there's this guy that went to his car with one of his dogs and the second dog still in the park and he's sitting in the car with the door open and being like, come on, luck, luck. As if their dog is just gonna magically run into the, what the, f some people, eh? But if you ever find yourself in one of these situations, oh my God, I have an amazing invention for you. They're called leashes. I know it sounds crazy, but then you have the control. Oh, look at this little guy or big guy. Hello. Oh my God, you know what I just realized? That's Luck Luck. That is the dog that is not, not listening and going to the owner and the owner's just being stupid. Okay, all right. Good to know that me saying its name calls it better than its owner. <laughs> is a winding road no telling where it goes driving through days and nights won't stop for traffic lights and I Searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down So the most common question that I get asked as an Aussie owner is how much exercise do they need? And this is important to answer the question as to how much they need in order to go to somebody's place and be calm and be normal and relaxed and enjoy their time versus being like, oh my God, I gotta do something. So every single day I normally exercise Frankie between one to three hours, whether that is a frisbee session or a dog park session or even going on a run or a hike. Now with that being said, going to somebody's house and wanting them to be tired, I need to do today. I did not do enough. If I was really going to someone's house where Frankie has never been before and I really want him to be properly behave and just be calm and relaxed, then I would need to get him above that three hour mark or a lot of mind work. So if I had to choose anything to do all of that and to be least amount of time as possible, I would definitely play frisbee with Frankie and get him to do all of his tricks and, and his little, uh, his work, because that's like one of his jobs. But since today we have Indy, it's a little bit different. Indy doesn't play frisbee, so she needs to get some exercise as well. So today I decided to do the dog park. It's been a very busy day, so I only had time to do one thing, and this is what I chose. If you're wondering why I chose the park, it's because it takes a lot of stimulation out of their minds to be constantly moving, to be following me, to be listening, and to be treating other dogs and meeting other dogs with respect. Which I know is a lot to ask, and for some dogs that is something that, <laughs> well, isn't for them. But for these two, it works out really well for them. They love going to the park, they love their little adventure, they love following me as they both go separate ways. <laughs> and going to these dog parks that are more open and free range dog parks, it almost guarantees that they're gonna get some exercise versus going into a fenced in one. Because I just stand there and so do they. I'm gonna say because I don't think anyone else will. Huge reason why it's important to exercise and get your dog outside before you go to somebody's place is so they can have a proper bowel movement. I know that sounds pretty gross, but them moving gets those bodily functions moving and they're gonna have a bowel movement before you get there because it's always super awkward when you're spending the time outside with your dog because they're nervous and anxious and scared about where they are and they gotta to go to the bathroom. And then 
arguably one of the most important things is transportation. And how do you get them there safely? My pups are set up in the back seat and we have the Kurgo car seat cover. <laughs> That sounds about right. As well as they're both about to be clipped in using the Kurgo seat belts. I use seat belts because if a cage gets smushed in the back of the Jeep, then I can't open it and I can't set the dogs free. But with the seat belts, I'm able to either cut them or have two points of release so then they can get out. However, one of the things that I want to change about the back seat is I think I might want to change it to a hammock because they do not like this little piece in the middle that has that gap, which means that they can fall. And then in the back, I have an extra water bowl that's one of those pop-up ones as well as the leash that clips on to absolutely anything so if I have to clip them to each other or if I have to clip them to my pants or just even just having like more of like a traffic handle I have that there and as I said before I always try to carry extra poop bags just in case anybody needs them but if you're wondering why transportation is so important obviously getting your dog there safely is the most important thing. But secondly, you wanna get your dog there in a comfortable state of mind because if they arrive there and they're all anxious because they just had this terrifying car ride, then they might be a little stressed out when they walk in the door. That is why I wanna change the car seat cover to a hammock because they do get a little anxious when there's that gap, but that's something that we have to pay for. So eventually it'll come. So not to be creepy, but do you see the car that's going there? That's driving by right in front of us right now? Um, yeah, that's the dog. The dog that was like running around and the owner was in the car, just calling it from the car. I was telling like a bunch of people, because they were like, whose dog is this? And I was like, yeah, he's in the parking lot. We've been at the park for over an hour and a half, and they just left. That means that man was trying to find his dog or just sitting in the parking lot for an hour and a half. <sighs> Anyways, mine are in the car, and we'll see you at home. One for you. One for you. See you later. And then one of the final things, that I recommend is always bring a toy. Bring their toy, bring again their scent that they like. Don't bring their favorite toy because then if there's another dog there and they ruin your dog's favorite toy, you're not gonna hear the end of it. But now it is time for me to pack up and head over to Indy's home. Indy, we're going to your home. Indy hasn't been home in a while. Sometimes she stays with me and uh, I think she's starting to like me. She never used to like kiss anybody before, but now she's like giving me Give me kisses. <laughs> if Frankie catches this last treat. <laughs> what? Okay, I was gonna say, then the video ends. All right, so now it's Indy's turn. Leave it. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's the end of the video, but Indy, don't worry, I got you something. Take it. Jeez, we can't let Franco get everything. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you're new here, make sure you click that thumbs up button and hit the subscribe button. We're very close. We're on our way to 30,000 subscribers. Indy's excited. Franco to the moon is excited. And we'll see you guys tomorrow for another episode of Dogmas. I think they're excited. <laughs>